the fact that this started as David Tennant is going to be talked down and the patriarchy is going to be smashed in an upcoming episode of Doctor Who and has somehow shifted into let's hate on David Tennant because of stuff I imagined in my brain is wild. I think I know why Doomcock is actually wearing a mask and an outfit in this video because if he wasn't and also if he wasn't modulating his voice you'd be able to just hear the tears and the quivering of his voice as he's getting upset at that he made up. This is absolutely deluded. Hey folks, this is Mr. Tardis, and no live stream this week, unfortunately. I'm not able to stream because I'm away for a few days for work, but I decided to do this video uh, as like a substitute for this week's stream, and we'll be back on schedule again the week after, and I might even try and make a couple of other videos over this next week to make up for the lack of live stream segments. But if you want to keep up to date on all of that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I massively appreciate it. I recently hit 23,000 subscribers, so join the Mr. Tardis army uh, as we take down misinformation as we take down horrible fake news. And I've decided to do this video today because I think it's really, really interesting going back over the past couple of years as the Jodie Whittaker, as the Chris Chibnall era of Doctor Who is starting to wind down over the coming months, just looking back on the absolute train wreck that has been Not My Doctor discourse and the fandom menace and everything around those, uh, those online circles. I'll try and do some more of those in the future, but one name that did keep on coming up in the comment section was Doomcock, a reactionary online fandom menace menace proponent who uh, is so replete with misinformation in his videos that he was even like ostracized from many fandom menace people. This is a YouTuber basically who with a distorted voice and a supervillain mask tries to reclaim pop culture from evil woke SJW NPCs and you can see here just the, the videos he's done over the past couple of days. Disney filled with fear. Activists silence moderate employees with intimidation and power grab. Disney under attack. Gay activists demand Disney surrender to their agenda. Uh, I presume presume this is about Disney employees wanting to protest the don't say gay bill. So it seems like Doomcock has an issue with people who are protesting the don't say gay bill. Nice to see where he ideologically stands. But if you look at some of his most popular videos, you'll see that these are supposed leaks from insider sources saying like Brie Larson has been fired from Marvel. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy has been fired about six times, according to Doomcock here, uh, which obviously has never happened. Uh, Doomcock is so like infamous online for just openly just reporting rumors and insider sources stuff that just never remotely turn out to be true that like I said he was even ostracized and there was a whole fandom menace drama about it uh, including people like Nerd Rotic, who we've talked about before and make no mistake folks if you are so dishonest and so disingenuous that even Nerd Rotic is trying to distance himself from you you basically are just living on an entire other plane of existence with the amount of misinformation that you're spreading and this tweet started redoing the rounds on Doctor Who Twitter over the past couple of weeks and this tweet from October October 2019 linking to a Doomcock video about a supposed insider source for Doctor Who season 12. So this was in October 2019. So this is like nine months after Doctor Who Resolution which uh, series 11 was finished and this was a couple of months before series 12 started before Spyfall aired on New Year's Day 2020. And here's the tweet. Doctor Who season 12 will make heads explode according to rumours from an inside source. You won't believe what Jodie Whittaker is going to do to David Tennant as well as the male doctors. If you're a fan, prepare to be furious, hashtag Doctor Who. I've done videos in the past debunking obviously fake Doctor Who news, but I think that now with the Jodie Whittaker and Christian Moore era sort of uh, winding down at the moment, it would be interesting to look back at what is clearly one of the biggest obviously fake rumours that was circulating in the fandom menace circles. Doctor Who season 12 rumour, the shaming of David Tennant, with over 100,000 views and 2,300 comments from people, uh, just completely despondent with with uh, what this rumour seems to be implying. But what is this supposed rumour? Let's take a look at what Doomcock has to say. I have received some information from a source with ties inside the BBC itself, claiming to have direct knowledge of the Doctor Who production. And what they have to say about an upcoming episode is absolutely chilling. <sighs> First things first, yes, this is the guy's gimmick. Uh, a voice filter, a supervillain mask. He looks like something that came out of like an early era nostalgia critic skit, but okay. If this source is valid, and I have no way to confirm this independently as this source absolutely requires anonymity, then not only are suspicions about the active SJW agenda of the BBC confirmed, 
the active SJW agenda of the BBC being confirmed. Reminder, this came out in late 2019 when the BBC, specifically the news department, were doing everything in their power to make sure that the furthest right government won the general election that year. But also about a year after this video was released, the BBC would forbid employees from attending gay pride parades. Like, SJW conspiracy, come the hell on. But I'm sure over the course of this video, Doomcock is going to elaborate or maybe give specifics on what he means by what's happening within the BBC. I'm sure of it. But an attitude of outright hostility towards the Doctor and his past incarnations is also directly confirmed by this reporting I'm about to share with you. Nevertheless, barring further confirmation or the release of the purported episode itself, I must present this information as unsubstantiated rumor. I can only confirm that I have received this information from a source making these claims. As you can see, I am discreet, and I protect my sources, always. Firstly, you protect your sources in the same way how a ghost Pokemon technically can't be hit by normal attacks, but also, you're discreet. You, you, dude, you're literally dressed up like a Z-list Power Rangers villain, and you've got a YouTube channel approaching 300,000 subscribers. This is the opposite of discreet. There is currently an upcoming crossover special in pre-production that features Jody Whittaker going over the top on lecturing a cocked David Tennant on his past biases and forcing him to repent for his toxic masculinity. Lecturing a cooked David Tennant. Uh, Doomcock, I really want to know, did the email specifically use those words or are you editorializing here? My source claims that, quote, it's literally a Jody lecture talking about how she's better than her past incarnations putting them down. If this is true, then all the Whitaker apologists who have claimed that fans objecting to her incarnation of the classic character were doing so due to misogyny can shove it. If this is true, then the inherent propaganda and bias behind Whitaker's selection by the BBC is more than confirmed. It's rammed down the throats of fans. So it's been about two and a half years since Doomcock did this obviously fake rumor. Like, this never happened in the show. Nothing even remotely comparable to it has happened in the show over the past two and a half years. So by proxy, by Doomcock's own logic here, then I guess the fact that it didn't happen means that, yes, the people who were objecting to Jodie Whittaker's casting as the 13th Doctor were doing so because of misogyny, and that there was no sort of SJW bias in the casting of Jodie Whittaker. Like, that's not me saying that, that's Doomcock's own logic, because this rumour never happened. The nerve of this batch of NPC writers to not only denigrate the past doctors as toxic males and proclaim Jodie Whittaker to be the bestest doctor ever, but to place themselves as writers above all the brilliant people who wrote Doctor Who in the past is intolerable. If this rumor is correct, then these idiots actually believe that they have perfected the Doctor. That all the Doctors of the past were flawed for being white males and therefore toxic? And that all of you who have loved Doctor Who all these decades were toxic dupes supporting the patriarchy? And so they're writing this episode to shame the Doctors of the past, shame the writers of the past, and shame all of you for not loving Jody the bestest of all. Okay, and once again, this can't be emphasized enough. Th this never happened. This is clearly something that Doomcock made up. And the reason why I'm confident in saying that he has just flat out made this up, not that he actually received an email, is A, the massive amount of editorializing that he's doing for this story. Like, I genuinely don't think that anybody with above-the-line information to actually know about David Tennant's casting and his involvement in any Series 12 or any special or any... I honestly don't think that he would say that, he, that David Tennant was cooked and lectured. But you've also got to note here the complete non-specificity of anything that Doomcock is saying here. Like, he's not saying exactly what the Tenth Doctor, what David Tennant is meant to have repented for. Like, somebody who, if this were to have happened, David Tennant being in a special, would have to actually know the contents of the scene in question, right? They'd have to know exactly how the conversation or how the dynamic actually went down. And thus, the fact that no specifics here are provided means that either this was just, he was, being, he was just trolled by a joke email, or, considering that it's Doomcock who we're talking about, about here there was no email at all and this has just been invented in his head to rile up a fan base
And once again, let's not forget that this guy has done what could be about a dozen videos at this point, claiming that Kathleen Kennedy has been like let go from Lucasfilm or let go from Disney, even though that has, to date, never actually happened yet. But if this rumour was so obviously just invented from the mind of some clearly mentally deranged supervillain, then what was the precedent in prior seasons or in prior episodes of the Jodie Whittaker era that would make him think, yeah, of course they're going to continue this into series 12. In series 11, I don't don't actually think there was anything that fits that description. Like off the top of my head, the closest that I can think of is maybe in Resolution, when uh, Ryan's dad turns up and the 13th Doctor says like, you upset my friend, you let him down, you weren't at Grace's funeral. But honestly, that is incredibly mild and I don't think that's gender specific. I think that the 13th Doctor would have said that to any parent. And if a scene like that is the case, if that is the precedent that Doomcock is working with here and his audience is working with here, then it's the same line of thinking where Bolstrek claimed that in Fugitive of the Jadoon there was a white male villain, even though categorically by any definition of the word villain there wasn't a white male villain in Fugitive of the Jadoon. He claims that he was talking about All Ears Allen, the the cafe owner that was in the town at the beginning of the story. But firstly, there's no way that that guy's a villain of the story, exemplified by the fact that he was actually vindicated in the story and he was proven to be completely correct in his conspiracy mongering. But because he was depicted as just a little bit weird and a little bit obsessive, Bolstrek took that as a direct attack. And it's the same line of thinking that I think Doomcock is working with here, where they are so delusional and so needing to be victimized and so needing to find examples of a victim complex and trying to shoot down the patriarchy or whatever, that even though none of it exists, they have to imagine it. That in order to make the narrative stick, they just have to find any example in media of a male being portrayed as anything other than completely perfect. This person has to be completely perfectly characterized. This person cannot have faults. They cannot have fallibilities. Anything less than that, and it's victimization. Anything less than total perfection is not good enough for these guys, which demonstrates massive, massive fragility. They're writing this episode to make it clear, once and for all, that Jodie Whittaker's doctor is the only doctor worthy of the name. And if that doesn't make you want to vomit your guts out, you're not a Doctor Who fan. That's right, if you don't believe the obviously fake rumour that I've conjured up from the depths of my depraved mind, then you are not really a Doctor Who fan. Oh, the delusion! One of the saddest things about this is the participation of David Tennant. If my source is valid, Tennant has agreed to be on this show and hang his head in shame as Jody lectures him about his biases and toxicity. This makes me sick. Like, what biases? What toxicity? If this is an alleged true source, then surely the source in question would actually know the contents of the scene. That's kind of the only way that they'd be able to know something like this in the first place. Like, playing devil's advocate here, let's say that somebody involved in the production of Doctor Who really did believe that David Tennant was actually appearing in an upcoming special or an upcoming episode for this purpose. Then surely they might have, like, a script note or even something as basic as a scene description that you get on the front of the call sheet. Every call sheet that you get will have a scene breakdown of what's being shot for the day, and while the call sheet itself would only have a brief description of the scene, for example, this scene has got the 13th Doctor and the 10th Doctor, and it's set in the TARDIS, and they're having an argument and a confrontation in the TARDIS. But those call sheets would also be accompanied by a set of sides. Now, sides are an A5 version of the script of the scenes being shot that day, and that will have the dialogue. That will have the specificity. So somebody who does know that David Tennant is on set, that they have filmed this stuff, that this is indeed in an upcoming special or in season 12, would know what the 10th Doctor's biases are and would be able to give Doomcock the information. But because, like we said here, Doomcock has very, very likely just pulled this out of nowhere and made this up. And because series 11 was so milquetoast, liberal and centrist, he actually has no smash the patriarchy examples to work with from series 11, he has to be deliberately vague because he's got nothing to work with here. 
Doomcock has watched series 11 of Doctor Who, has found nothing to actually get upset about, and in order to rile up his audience, he's just invented fan fiction in his head, and he's getting mad at that. And in order for him to mentally justify his terrible reaction to series 11, he then has to invent a rumour for series 12, which, once again, never happened, nothing even remotely close to that happened. He has to invent another rumour to substantiate the things that he's already made up. It's delusion stacked on top of delusion. And saying in this video, oh, it makes me sick, it makes me disgusted, if you're not upset, you're not a real Doctor Who fan, I think I know why Doomcock is actually wearing a mask and an outfit in this video, because if he wasn't, and also if he wasn't modulating his voice, you'd be able to just hear the tears and the quivering of his voice as he's getting upset at shit that he made up. Like, if he took off the mask in this video, you'd see, like, a stereotypical, like, uh, Japanese crying character with tears and snot running down their face. That is what's happening under Doomcock's mask right now. This makes me sick, because Tennant is my favourite doctor after Tom Baker. The tenant would consent to the belittling of his character by this mendacious and mawkish munchkin makes me ill. It makes me wretch. And it also gives me pause, because I've made no secret that I wasn't terribly fond of Matt Smith's portrayal of the Doctor. And yet according to my source, quote, Matt Smith refused to do the special because of the shit they would have done to his character. Furthermore, my source informed me that Peter Capaldi made excuses that he needed to dedicate more time to the Suicide Squad so he could get around being in it. So it seems these two actors either cared more about the Doctor than Tennant did, or they were simply smarter than Tennant and saw the SJW writing on the TARDIS wall. <sighs> This is absolutely deluded. Like, we've got to break this down on, like, a, a near subatomic level here. So, Doomcock here says that, like, David Tennant and Tom Baker are amongst his favourite Doctors, but Doomcock's love for that incarnation of the character apparently plays second to his own ideological need to feel victimised. Because, once again, he's clearly just made this up and just pulled this rumour out of nowhere, but he loves David Tennant so much that he's willing to just do the equivalent of character assassination in a rumour video. Like, David Tennant consents to being cooked in an upcoming Doctor Who special, and Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi respected the show and respected the Doctor so much that they wouldn't participate in it. Capaldi came up with excuses to not do it, which firstly, how on earth would a source know that Capaldi was making an excuse? Like, at best, the most devil's advocate position here is that Capaldi declined to be in it, but no, the source has to take this a step further. The fact that this started as David David Tennant is going to be talked down and the patriarchy is going to be smashed in an upcoming episode of Doctor Who and has somehow shifted into let's hate on David Tennant because of stuff I imagined in my brain is wild and explicitly saying in this rumour video that David Tennant, if he's doing this, does not care about the character, if he's doing this, he's denigrating the past, he's doing cultural vandalism, like, you... I thought you liked David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor and here you are just because you wanted to push an agenda about hating the current era have decided to slander the guy. We see this over and over again in like reactionary ideology. We saw it with Nick Fletcher a few months back when he was complaining about there not being any good male role models in media and stuff like that and on the TV and in films and stuff. However, it is his own policies, his own political ideology as a conservative MP that puts men down. He does not give a crap about men. He does not give a crap about men's rights. He just wants to push the culture war narrative and Doomcock is doing the same thing here. He claims to love the old doctors, he claims to love David Tennant, but no, he can sacrifice David Tennant on the altar of, oh, let's just hate Jodie Whittaker a bit more. The prospect of Jodie lecturing Tennant on being the doctor is a goddamned abomination that will set the Whovian fan base on fire and salt the earth with copious tears. Remember, this is supposedly a rumour, but look at how conclusive the language is here. Like, the ambiguity of, oh, this is a rumour, uh, if anyone else hears anything about this, this could not be true. That ambiguity in the second half of this video, completely gone. He is now taking this as an absolute given that his mental delusion is what's going to happen in the next story, which is hilarious considering that we're now two and a half years removed from this video and nothing remotely comparable to this has even happened. My source claims this was supposed to be an upcoming Christmas special. 
However, it may have to be bumped back to a 2020 release because of repeated delays in production because the showrunner keeps making power plays for more money and creative control to push identity politics. First things first, what identity politics? Please, once again, there's no specifics here, and there's no specifics because Doomcock's got nothing. He's dealing with an empty hand here. But once again, it's the escalation of the rumour. Like, this video, this rumour started off as David Tennant's going to be an upcoming special and Jodie Whittaker is going to lecture him about SJW politics and stuff like that, and has now also turned into uh, Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi turned it down because they actually had respect for the character, and now it's, oh, Chris Chibnall is making power plays and demanding more money and is wanting to put his ideology front and center like is there no depths to the absolute lunacy that doomcock is working through here there is no lie too big there is no rumor too outlandish as long as it pushes that ideology as long as it pushes the anti-sjw uh anti-woke or whatever these guys are going to refer to next as their little own boogeyman it's absolutely okay and what a perfect representation here we've got an imagined hypocrisy we've got an imagined slight we've got imagined rumors and imagined uh, anti-fandom stuff happening within the show and what we've got here is an imagined supervillain opposing it all. We've got an imaginary persona wanting to try and combat all of this in Doomcock. Like, what, like, this guy's origin story, like, genuinely, what was it that, like, made him break? The Joker fell into a vat of chemicals. Dr. Octopus was a science experiment gone wrong. Thanos, an alien mad titan with delusions of grandeur. Like, genuinely, like, going off script, what is this guy's origin story? What started it? I bet it was The Last Jedi. I bet it was The Last Jedi that really set him off. What was it? So go into videos, sort by oldest. Doomcock review Star Wars The Last Jedi. How does he know? How does he know? It really was The Last Jedi that set this guy off. Oh my. And he has the goal to say that the BBC and Jodie fans have got an NPC narrative or an NPC approach when this guy is the epitome of an NPC. Just the exact same buzzwords, the exact same lines, even the same origin story. What an NPC. The showrunner's power plays and Jodie wanting more social justice stuff and the BBC point blank refusing to decline her wants in fear of the first female doctor quitting or worse, having to fire her has gotten so bad that people are scared of what to write for her. And so this season is going to be even more over the top with SJW politics, lectures, and virtue signaling. I, this is this is nuts like but f firstly there is absolutely a double standard going on here like saying that it's bad that Jodie Whittaker would want to be more involved in the role and would want to sort of have a creative input in the character and the scripts and the stories like any other doctor would be lauded for that approach John Pertwee basically used the role of the third doctor in the 1970s to just do on screen whatever he wanted to do like martial arts and riding vehicles and having beautiful companions and beautiful women around him like the fandom now respectively respect that creative input tom baker was massively creatively involved in the characterization of the doctor and in the stories especially during the latter half of his tenure and for one of doomcock's favorite doctors the 10th doctor there's brilliant behind the scenes footage of david tennant with director a ross lynn during the end of time part two actually suggesting like what to do with the final moments and talking about like which version to use in the edit like which version is best for the audience and which version he thinks is more impactful like that's normally a director or an editor's decision but David Tennant is there saying yeah this is my input this is what I think like that's laudable it is absolutely a double standard that a male doctor actor is able to have creative input or influence but no it's terrible when Jodie does it this is absolutely hypocrisy but once again it's the non-specificity like what is Jodie allegedly going to be lecturing people about what are the SJW politics that she's going to put in series 12 this person if they really were an insider source would give him something to work with here and the fact that Doomcock started this video with David Tennant and has now brought in Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi and committed character assassination on David Tennant and Chris Chibnall and stuff like that, completely unjustified and so removed from the original starting point of the video, indicates that if this insider source had this information and drip fed it to him, he'd absolutely put it in a video. No, he doesn't have it in this video, 
because he's got nothing to work with here. These are delusions. Like, just imagine the fragility, just the need to be victimized, the need to be discriminated against, the need to have an opponent to fight so you can put on your mask and your cloak and everything, and do videos just relaying your own delusions to a massive audience. Like, just the fragility. I wonder if Doomcock were to, like, turn around and do a 180 for us right now. We'd see at the back of that mask is some sort of massive pole going down his back, because I think that's the only way he would have anything resembling a spine. Like, he takes the mask off and his whole body just collapses like Peter Griffin in that Family Guy episode when he has no bones. And so with Jodie Whittaker, the BBC has taken what was a charming, wonderful, whimsical, magical show and turned it into a propaganda vehicle for SJW politics. With Jodie Whittaker, so he's just laying the blame here squarely at Jodie Whittaker's feet. Like, what has she done to you? <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like the idea that this character that you've loved most of your life is now being paraded around like a poodle in a ring to make woke points, to please NPCs, and to further agendas that you don't support? This is no longer entertainment. This is simply straight up propaganda and they view the doctor not as a character but as a vehicle for political ideas. Firstly, this is just absolutely projection on Doomcock's part. This video itself, in and of itself, is absolutely propaganda trying to push a political message, trying to push a political narrative. But also, notice that rhetorical shift that he's now done in the past few sentences, where he's saying, is this the doctor you knew? Can you really say this? Is this the doctor you knew? Can you really say that the doctor still lives? Can you really say that this thing called Doctor Who is in any way worthy of the name anymore. Like, this is straight-up incitement, using these rhetorical questions for a rumour that he's completely made up, and he originally started the video saying, if this is true, if this is real, but now he's just treating it like it is de facto true, and asking the audience, this true thing that is definitely happening because I've told you, doesn't this make you sick? Can you really say that Doctor Who still lives? Like, the rhetorical questions are a very deliberate incitement strategy. There was a really great video that I was watching the other week. It was about Tim Pool, the uh, conservative political commentator and the tactics that he uses as plausible deniability. And I think they called the tactic, like, loud idiot and quiet rationalist. Something like that, where basically Tim Paul, in all of his videos, is able to say, trans people are stealing your kids, they're gonna chop off their dicks, they're gonna, they're gonna cancel you, they're gonna completely shame you. Or maybe they won't. Maybe I'm just going a bit too over the top. Maybe I'm just looking into this too much. Maybe I'm misreading the signs. It's a cowardly tactic in order to give yourself plausible deniability, but it also shows what you really, really believe in, and also what you want your audience to believe in. Because you can say, yeah, this is just a rumor. This is something that I was told, you know, treat it with skepticism. But when you shout and you use emotive language and you try to provoke your audience or the people watching, that shows what you want them to take away from it. That it doesn't actually matter at the end of the day if this is a rumor because this is, even if the rumour itself is not true, ideologically, this is still happening around culture, which it emphatically isn't. And we know that because if it was true, Doomcock would have given us any example in this video, but he didn't, because he's got nothing. And that, my friends, is the current disgraceful state of Doctor Who. Things are only going to get worse. Not only are they selling us the lie that Jodie Whittaker is the bestest doctor ever, they are now hell-bent on convincing all of us that all the past doctors were rubbish. They're hell-bent on this. This is the current state. You started this video by saying it was a rumor. Like, this is, like, rhetorically a complete flip, which is pretty funny in retrospect because nothing resembling this even came close to happening. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for my favorite part of the segment. Go in the comment section. Uh, so let's find out what the top comments are for this Doomcock video. And once again, this is a rumor that completely turned out to be absolutely false. My lord, I'm just disgusted that they turned the show into such a dumpster fire. Rest in peace, Doctor Who, you're truly missed. If this is true, it simply won't work. What these people fail to realize is that just by saying it's so doesn't make it 
so. There's so many fans of previous Doctor Two, and that won't change because the current incarnations say they were rubbish. Uh, I've never had access to the classic series. To me, the definitive Doctor will always be David Tennant, but hearing this rumor breaks my heart. If this is real, that's way past the final nail in the coffin of Doctor Who. If this rumor is true, this is the last season for Doctor Who. Never thought I'd be rooting for the Daleks. Now my rage over current Doctor Who is even bigger on the inside. Sad thing is that David Tennant is personal friend with Jodie Whittaker, so he does not see a problem playing opposite her. You do not expect a dagger in the back from people close to you, yet that is where that usually comes from. Like, what the hell? Like, this is genuine brain rot. Like, an obviously fake rumor that did not come to pass. And this guy is now saying that Jodie Whittaker is going to stab David Tennant in the back? Like, I know, ideologically, gonna stab David Tennant in the back, but the evocative language, the hatred that they've got for Jodie Whittaker, like, she's just a person who plays a character in a TV show that you don't like at the moment. Like, like what justifies this behavior and this rhetoric? And Doomcock loved this comment. This comment responding to a rumor that he lied about and made up. Like, if Doomcock doesn't have a spine and he's just willing to openly lie to his audience to try and provoke them and get them riled up and angry, then these people aren't just sheep. They are, like, an army of prawns because, you know, prawns don't have spines. But let's go into the newest comments. And you've got a few people saying, oh, Doomcock still claimed to have insider source despite years of having none of his predictions come true. Too funny. Well, that didn't come true, etc, etc. So this was total bullshit. But this comment's really, really funny. This only matters if people watch and accept it. I don't mean to suggest this video doesn't matter. It very much does. I'm glad for this and other channels like it. So Kevin in this comment here is basically saying the quiet part out loud. I do not care if you lie to me. I do not care if you feed me false narratives. If you deliberately, willfully lie to me. If you shit in my mouth and tell me it's chocolate. I do not care. I will gobble it up because it's important that we keep to the narrative. It's important that we keep to the delusion. And honestly, that is kind of sad that these people need somebody to rile them up, need someone to make them perpetually angry, that there's so little actually going on in their lives for them to be angry and upset about that they just have to make stuff up. Because Doomcock's superpower here isn't speaking truth to companies, it isn't defending pop culture. His real superpower is a persecution complex. Someone who, if you took the mask off, you'd be able to see the crying, sniveling person underneath, desperate to take offense to anything. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all my friends stay angry. Yep, stay angry. That's it. It doesn't matter if I'm lying to you. It doesn't matter if I'm just giving you unequivocal bullshit. Stay angry. Stay angry. Stay motivated. That's the sad part about it. One reason I wanted to do this video, apart from the whole, you know, Emperor's got no clothes type deal here, is also because Doomcock is still doing this. Like, this isn't something he did two and a half years ago and learned his lesson from. As far as I'm aware, he has yet to actually admit that he was wrong or take responsibility for spreading, like, outright fiction to over 100,000 people who watched the video. But yeah, he's still doing this. Like, this is still the ideological center of his channel. And I know people are going to say in the comments, because I do read the comments, people are going to say, Mr. Tyler, why don't you actually go and watch Doomcock's videos about Doctor Who to actually find out what he has that is an issue with the show? And I want you to genuinely think about that question for a second. We've just watched a guy complete like mental breakdown levels of delusion it's one of two things he's either deliberately lying to his audience and he knows that his audience is just going to uncritically eat it up or he's borderline schizophrenic like which one of those two do you think it is because it's one of those two why do you think his other videos would be beacons of good commentary why do you think his other videos would be full of actual critical discussion and a basic level of truth i'm super skeptical but tell you what folks because i'm nice uh, let's go to this video the destruction of doctor who uh, a rant lamenting a legend and what i'll do is that i will watch this entire video on camera and i will will actually include in this video and respond to if appropriate an actual argument or an actual point that he makes against the show. This video came out about a year ago so it's a bit more up to date than the one that we talked about before but I'll see you folks on the other side. There have been these global rewatches of past installments of Doctor Who over the past few weeks organized by Emily Cook of Doctor Who magazine in an attempt to comfort fans in isolation and I suppose in an attempt to reunify the fandom by reminding them of better days back when the doctor wasn't a female 
and the Time Lords weren't child murderers. He's... So his issue really just is the Doctor's a woman. Like, this is just the issue. Like, Doomcock's main issue right now, apart from the Time Lords thing, like, did he think that in the classic series the Time Lords were depicted as, like, good people? Like, in the Trial of a Time Lord, the Doctor calls them power-mad conspirators, like, that they were the true evil that the Doctor should have been fighting. Decadent, degenerate, and rotten to the core! And Tecta Yun's, like, abuse and experiments on the Doctor, on the Timeless Child, were depicted in the show as a bad thing. Like, this is just basic media illiteracy. Like, he, <laughs> either he just has no idea what he's watching in front of him, or he's just lying and misrepresenting the media in question. Hey, Gary from Nerdrotic, why do you keep on playing? platforming pathological liars on your channel like i thought you were wanting honesty from youtubers and that's why people are running to youtube channels so they can get a little honesty <laughs> and also yeah but better times when the doctor wasn't a woman so it is a gender thing then yeah you do have an ideological issue with the doctor being a woman here okay i mean the the honesty is quite refreshing here cornell did something even worse duplicating the destruction Chibnall inflicted on Doctor Who canon in microcosm by cannibalizing and destroying his own work. That's right. Cornell wrote an epilogue to Family of Blood, where the so-called 13th Doctor lets the girl out of the mirror as a tacit judgment against Tennant's Doctor and a statement that the previous male doctors were evil. This pathetic piece of garbage, groveling before Chibnall and the woke wankers at the BBC actually retconned his own fucking work to send a message out that men are bad, that Jodie Whittaker's doctor is the perfection of the doctor, the ultimate doctor, the one true and right doctor. Makes me furious that this ass-kissing lackey has trashed all of that mystery and poetry and awe just to send a goddamn virtue signal that men are bad and women are good and Whittaker is the bestest ever. Is this what he's on about? Like, firstly, that's not remotely what happens in the story. Like, the epilogue that Paul Cornell wrote for Human Nature and the Family of Blood had the 13th Doctor, finally, after, like, centuries of waiting, like, the, the 11th Doctor had a massive lifespan as well, like, thousands of years, like, a thousand years. Like, a very lengthy lifespan. And after maybe that time, the Doctor's like, okay, it's been long enough. I think I've maybe forgiven her for what she's done um and it just releases her like it, there's no gendered statement here like actually let's, let's find the work if possible so yeah paul cornell wrote an epilogue for the family of blood doctor who locked down the shadow in the mirror which has daughter of mine in this mirror and over the centuries over the different incarnations of the doctor they go and visit daughter of mine in the mirror in the tardis and they and they basically say if you apologize we'll let you out and the daughter of mine refuses to apologize so she stays in there and then the 13th Doctor comes to visit. She asked me if I still wanted to get out. Of course, I said. But if you've come here to gloat, you should know I haven't suffered. I've been to every mirror in the universe, and I've frightened many children. I will not bow to you. I will not say sorry, ever. She said she understood that. That in many ways it was her own fault that myself and my family killed so many people. That made me scream at her. What I did wasn't up to you. She said then that Mercy had nothing to do with fairness. That Mercy set fairness aside and said there was no getting even, no balancing the scales. There was only deciding against pain. There was only being kind to yourself by being kind to others. She said she didn't need me to be sorry. And she took a big hammer from her pocket. I jumped back from the mirror as she smashed it. She smashed it time after time, smashed it into a million pieces. So yeah, you can watch this full thing. It's like five minutes long. It's on the Doc Who Lockdown channel. Where on earth in this short is there anything to do with gender? Where on earth in this short is Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor saying, oh, my past incarnation was wrong. My past incarnation was bad. I'm the best. Like, this is, it's, it's just an extension of what we saw in that original rumor video. Like, he's just full on deluded. Like, either that or he's knowingly just misrepresenting the media that he's talking about. Like, either one is bad, but this is like, path like pathological dishonesty which probably makes sense as to why nerdrotic will platform him i went to see him last year at a party i had my photo taken with him and he has the nerve to say doctor who doesn't have a canon as a writer fuck off if he really believes that he's a fool like this is manic this is 
crazy. Like, they're just talking about how how angry that this stuff makes them and how they're stewing on it and how upset they are about stuff that's, like, not even happening and just milk toast opinions from a writer who, like, Paul Cornell has done Expanded Universe stuff, he's written for the TV show itself and everything. Like, I think that Paul Cornell is possibly best equipped almost more than any other writer for Doctor Who to, to, to sort of know or have an opinion on what works in terms of the canon and the outreach of the canon in the different expanded medias. Like, but th th this just, this negativity, this, like, that's ingrained in them, it's not healthy. S so yeah, this video was like a 16 minute tirade with absolute nothing, like misrepresenting everything that's been going on, just getting obscenely triggered that Paul Cornell has blocked them on Twitter. Like that's the main reason that they're upset. They're just upset that they got blocked on Twitter. And yeah, it's it's delusional. It is quite frankly utterly delusional. Insane behavior. Absolutely. Just no basis in reality, no basis on anything materially happening in the franchise or in the show, in the media that they're talking about. Just top to bottom, absolute delusion.